So a very good evening to all of you. My name is Pavas. I represent it in Stoke. I'm very happy to be hosting this uh, panel discussion with uh, the focus on one of the best boarding schools, uh, girls boarding schools that we have. Uh, the, um, some parents have already joined in. A very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, all we have with us uh, a very distinguished panel uh, from the Unison World School. Let me just take a moment uh, to introduce all of them. Uh, the, the format would be that I will kickstart the discussion and I'll, I'll let the context um, be set and post that, you know, we'll be happy to take any questions that the parents might have. So warm, very warm welcome to all of you. Let me introduce the panelists. Let me start with uh, with uh, Ms. 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 Mona Khanna. Ms. Mona Khanna is the vice principal at uh, the Unison World School. Um, she's a 20 years of experience in education. She was the head of their department at the Doon School. And uh, she's been a full, she's won the Fulbright Fellowship for Teaching Excellence and Achievement. We also have uh, Ms. Reshu Dora. Ms. Reshu Dora is a biology teacher. She's been with Unison since 2010 and she's the coordinator of international activities and the head of the lower school. Uh, we have Mr. Sanjay Singh, who has the, has the physical education department in Unison World School. He's got, uh, has been a coach and a coordinator in the sports person for the last 20 years. Very more welcome, all of you. Uh, Ms. Varsha Sharma. Uh, Ms. Sharma is, a, is for a very, she's been with Unison since 2011. She's got 20 years of teaching experience. She is uh, an English teacher. Uh, she's uh, somebody who uh, puts a lot of energy and enthusiasm into her teaching. And, and we have uh, Ms. Sarandati Shukla. Uh, Ms. Shukla is a senior physics teacher and the Dean of Pastoral Care at Jameson World School. And she's got 25, 29 years of, of teaching experience in boarding schools. So very warm welcome to the panelists here. Uh, you know, we're happy to be hosting this. Uh, so let me, uh, you know, without further ado, start with, uh, with, with, with the, the first question. Let's sort of get a warmed up in that. Uh, uh, Ms. Dora, you've been, you've been, I think you've had, the, you know, the, as far as the experience has been around the, the longest in Unison World School. So uh, uh, tell us a little, little bit about Unison and what makes it special. You're, you're, you're muted, Mr. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. All right. Thank you, Pavis. Yeah. Uh, so Unison, uh, Unison World School, it was founded in 2007. So it is a part of Unison Education Foundation. And uh, basically, the vision of our founder father was to create an uh, create an environment which is warm, inspiring, and accepting for a girl child. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we basically aim at develop. Uh, you know, we basically focus at girls where we provide an atmosphere where they develop a wide range of skills, and they enjoy their formative years at Unison. See, our motive here, our founder father basically wanted that girls should uh, preserve the best traditional Indian and international culture. Uh, thereby, uh, we decided to opt for a student-centric education based on values. Okay. So an education system uh, which would provide them with ample opportunities, not only for their uh, growth, but also a, a gradual progression. Okay. Uh, of course, we have world-class facilities um, and uh, with state-of-the-art infrastructure. Uh, we offer a different curricula, both Indian as well as international. When it comes to accommodation, it is the finest accommodation uh, that can be provided. Uh, faculty, of course, uh, we have a dedicated and a very committed, qualified faculty and experienced staff. Um, of course, uh, the girls who have passed out the alumni do share uh, the difference in, uh, you know, their being out of campus now. When it comes to location, uh, you know, it's, it's set amidst a very, very attractive countryside, which is uh, not in the city center, but a little far from the city center. And uh, our pupils, they enjoy a very calm, happy, and most important, a purposeful atmosphere in the school. Oh, yeah, I, I guess I've, I've visited the school a couple of times, and I think it's it's indeed a wonderful school. Uh, I've seen quite a few my, uh, myself, and I would rate Unison right at the top as far as uh, you know the location and the local and everything else that's concerned. Uh, Ms. Shukla, uh, 
my 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 question is that you know uh, i have a, these whole host of wonderful day schools in the neighborhood you know absolutely uh, good schools and wonderful schools all all, all around me. why would i as a parent even consider let's say in general boarding and then in unison in particular you know if 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 unison what does that extra bit that a boarding offers uh, over a day school that you know a parent would still be interested in a boarding school why would i send my teenager there if i go by the history of boarding schools i would say boarding school is not a new trend it is it has been there in our epics from the very beginning if we talk about ramayana or mahabharat time also you would see that there were gurukuls and the kings used to send their uh, sons and their daughters for a boarding school setup to uh, educate their children much as the similar scenario here we have the day schools and we have the boarding schools i would say why a parent would choose a boarding school over a day school is because today the parents are busy parents both the parents are working and they want the child to have an overall development all round development but under well supervised environment and that is what we are able to provide in a boarding school we can get, give first rate holistic education under one roof and these children they will be independent thinkers they will be able to actually take the decisions in future and the camaraderie that develops in a boarding school i being a boarding school student myself i can say yes. the sorority or the sisterhood or the camaraderie that develops in a boarding school i'm sorry to say that does not happen in a day school and the diversity which is the biggest pool why a parent should choose a boarding school over a day school is the diversity the diversity is not only in terms of geographical boundaries it is also in terms of cross national cultural diversity food habits religion language so it is a mini world that the child is exposed to so after the child passes out after grade 12 she enters the real world and before that she has already experienced a mini world inside a boarding school so that cross national cultural diversity that she faces is the real real uh, boon that i can say a boarding school provides right and if i may just add on here at uws we have the children who are coming not only from different states of india but from the other parts of the world as well indonesia thailand nepal so that cross national cross geographical boundary is a real real boon I would say. Let me just add on a point here, as we have all heard several times, it takes a community to raise a child. Absolutely. In school, is a community yeah. where yeah. someone is an aunt, someone will be an uncle, and there will be siblings. And yeah. parents do not have to all the time worry about where is my child, what is she doing, is she with a gadget, is the internet facility on, is she able to access some sites. Especially yeah. in day schools, this is becoming a huge problem at. you know it's a problem at large right now yeah and and, and I, i guess i guess to add to that is you know and a little bit i think is things that you take for granted i mean you breathe clean air i we don't i mean you 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 right in the midst of a very very uh, you know green and nice almost in midst of a of, of a mini forest there and i think you're able to you have a much 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 better healthier atmosphere to to grow up in and then that's so important uh, so thank you so much for that now uh, uh Dr. Kanna, let's look at uh, curriculum per se. In fact, the the way it has changed over a period. I'm not really referring to boarding schools right now, but but in the context of 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 Unison World School, what is it? What 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 is special about our our curriculum, our teaching? Our, uh, you know, how do we go about uh, you know inculcating some of those academic goals? See, powers. A broadly, if you look at we divide the curriculum into areas here we have we offer both the national which is the icsc cisc curriculum and the international curriculum which is the cambridge curriculum yeah. that starts from grade 9 to 10 yeah. having said that what we practice even in the junior classes is a curriculum which is based on where they, where they help the child to be an inquirer yeah. it's not a curriculum which is based on book learning 
it is a curriculum which helps the child which allows the child to explore to, you know uh, it's a well, hands on curriculum it's a hands on curriculum yeah. to uh, critically analyze what is being taught so what we do is we do not only teach the subject we do not teach the content only we teach the student and we teach the student the way the student has to learn yeah. every student cannot learn in a similar manner yeah. so this is you know it's such a hype thing right now nep is talking about mm -hmm. it's talking about flexibility in the curriculum yeah, yeah. the key word for nep is flexibility in the curriculum yeah but you have to believe it and is to see it for yourself if you look at our subject options yeah. the kind of diversity the kind of flexibility which we allow in our curriculum yeah. when it comes to choosing not one choosing a curriculum b it is about choosing a subject within the curriculum yeah. so there is a diverse range so that it is able to cater to the interest the attitude and the aptitude of every child is there with us yeah. and i would like to add on yeah the middle school we focus on bespoke curriculum so it is a custom tailored curriculum and interdisciplinary approach that we follow so the child actually learns through inquiry based learning yeah. so that is what uh, ms khanna so, was talking about yeah yeah thank you varunathi and it's not just about academics it is so curriculum for lot of school people is means academics for us it is not just academics it incorporates the extracurricular activity fitness which is sports yeah. for us art performing art fine art all of that is a part of our life and i think yes. I, i think dr khanna i think you know it a uh, good point that you raised here is this this individualized personal learning and individualized attention i think uh, you know we boarding schools are uniquely placed to do that the smaller schools that 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 you know the staff to student ratios is always much better you have a 24 by 7 curriculum you know you, you sort of start your day you know, much early so i think i think that bit of attention that a child can give can never be you know can get in a boarding school can never be sort of replicated it's not that either or kind of a situation you will just have a lot more opportunity to work with it it's a 24 by 7 curriculum so yeah. basically it's a 24 by 7 Very good. Very good. Everything is a part of the curriculum. And I think a flowing question to you, uh, Mr. Singh, now is that uh, let's talk sports. And I think the one thing that you know, even though you may have the facilities or don't have the facilities, day school, etc., the one thing that I I always thought, you know, even my uh, batchmates, etc., who were who studied in boarding school, they were always pretty good in sports. So how how do how do we integrate that? Where does sports fit in, in into the scheme of things as far as you know, Mr. Singh? Uh, Mr. Pavas, uh, sports uh, is uh, one of the most important parts of the curriculum in our okay. school, yeah. and uh, especially because uh, in uh, if I compare it to a day school, so sometimes you have to stay back in school, which is not that comfortable, or you have to you know visit another facility. So that takes a lot of time. Whereas uh, we can you know offer we offer more than almost eleven uh, to twelve sports under one roof. so we have options of uh, the daughter has the option of choosing uh, team games uh, to learn like basketball football hockey volleyball and we have excellent facilities for each one of them we have a floodlit football field floodlit hockey field and a couple of basketball in fact five uh, basketball uh, courts which are all you know well lit and volleyball court and so on and other than that uh, we also have uh, individual games to offer in the form of badminton Where we have a world-class, you know, multi-purpose hall, which has, you know, almost eight courts uh, simultaneously, you know, yeah. uh, operationable. And then we have shooting range. Uh, we have squash, table tennis. We have uh, skating. We have a world-class swimming pool, uh, which, 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 which the water can be heated also, yeah. and it works in winters. We have tennis arenas. and uh, you know how do the girls find time to do is uh, like in the morning we have uh, almost uh, uh, 40 minutes to an hour of uh, fitness activity and sports activity and then uh, again they get a chance in the evening so there is around 2 uh, hours available in the evening where they again go for the sport and uh, the most important thing which i would like to stress on the parents is to you know 
the earlier the child is sent to our school the more uh, you know she learns the better she learns in the sense the, the neuromuscular coordination at the early stage you know uh, is established and that then serves uh, throughout for them throughout the life it helps them you know keep fit also in all the way i think yeah that's 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 something so that's very important in fact you know i uh, that's one area that suffers enormously if you have a neighborhood school i'm sure that they have a nice ground but somewhere around right because uh, you know if you can remember the places that we grew up but perhaps a little more sparse you could still play out into the evening i have roads on three sides of where i live so i really can't you know blame my child if it doesn't have any way to go so i think i think i think that that brings me to another so sports is one part reshu what does a typical day look like at university in first week you mute me you mute it reshu i i think dr khanna will be able to answer this yes dr khanna what does a typical day for a girl look like this is it so <laughs> it looks like you know i'll tell you what is what is the life of a unison world school student yeah actually the school bursts into life at around 6 am and i must say this is the first dreaded bell of the day i don't think any of us has ever liked to get up in the morning and the boarders get up for a grinding schedule and as mr sanjay said that they start their day with some physical training and then get ready for the school after having 45 minutes of training and then they go for a nutritious breakfast and once they are fueled with a good dose of that at 8 am they now get ready to face the day ahead and it quickly unfolds in quick mode with two regular lessons and then morning assembly which is the time to thank god for all the blessings which have been bestowed on us it's followed by fruit break so and they quickly grab a fruit to keep them going through the next part of the day and then the classes which are we have three more classes where the students are you know as i mentioned earlier they are allowed to be inquirers and become lifelong learners the entire school then gathers in the dining hall and has a sumptuous lunch lunch at about 1 pm and followed by two more lessons so girls then head for extra curricular activities and i I must say that there are just so many to choose from: debating, dramatics, photography, graphic design, music, dance, chess. You can even use it to be a part of the school publication or the newsletters. But let me tell you, after this, as soon as the activities get over, again there is a refreshment break where children can tuck into some drink and snack. Once again, they go back to their houses because they need to change into their kit and get ready for sports. and as sir said then they will have uh, mr sanjay already mentioned they enjoy the game for about one and a half hour and make use of some outstanding facilities basketball shooting tennis swimming badminton and the list is endless about 12 to 13 games under one roof by the time it is 5:45 and the girls need a glass of milk to re-energize them for the evening yeah not yet over <laughs> come 6 pm parents must be wondering where is academics they have been playing there are extra curricular activities but no come 6 pm the girls head for prep prep is their self study time this is the perfect chance to get some of the homework out of the day staff is definitely there to offer guidance and help and prep comes to a close at 8 pm and they are rewarded by a dinner where they get get a range of uh, you know to choose from multi cuisines and it's not that they can choose every day but yes it is prepared in such a manner that they get a flavor of each type on some day or the other we have also have to learn uh, teach them how to adjust to different you know whatever they get to have in their <coughs> life ahead once back in the hostels around 8:30 pm students fondly recollect the day gone by laugh fun, have fun with their friends make a phone call to the parents and mentally plan themselves for the next morning let me tell you by that time sleep takes hold and 9:30 pm is the official time for the lights on i am saying official yes it's peace and uh, the senior girls stay on for another hour to work on their academics and their lights go out by 9 10:30 pm they need that much you know that shut by time because the fun has to start once again in the morning it's a morning yes sir it it, it It sounds very challenging. It is also very challenging, 
but let me tell you this is a very very rewarding day mm. and in a while they get used to this initially it is tough I try to add a little here. Yeah. Um, for lower school, we have incorporated fine arts and performing arts with the curriculum, okay. you know, so that they don't feel the pressure of studies from morning till the late afternoon. So in between, they have their performing arts and fine arts classes. And we also give them a taste of multi-sport. I think uh, uh, sports head of the department, Mr. Singh, uh, you know, he's taken this good initiative of uh, uh, having the little girls play all kinds of sports. Uh, I think Mr. Singh should should be able to brief us on that. Um, uh, Mr. Singh, if you could just share what, what you do with the lower school when it comes to multi-sport. And, and, and do mention the fitness report card. Don't yes, miss up on that. That is a unique feature at Unison World School. Okay. Yes, we have we have many things to offer, in fact. Uh, like in the day's curriculum, we even add, uh, they have to learn swimming compulsorily. Sometimes uh, we have, uh, in, the, in the timetable, there is a slot for swimming where... Uh, during the academics hour, she'll go for swimming. That's compulsory for everyone. Then we have a fitness, uh, comprehensive fitness report card, where uh, two times in the year they are tested, and their, uh, you know, their objective uh, reading is placed, uh, you know, in a graphical way, so that you, a parent, can understand where the daughter stands uh, internationally in terms of her fitness levels, and. Uh, and multi-sport, uh, if, if we look at the current research all over the world, we'll find that for a younger child, multi-sport is advisable so that all his her faculties, you know, develop. So, so for uh, grade 5th and 6th, in the first year, we are going more with the team games where they, you know, learn to face opponents, fall, get up. So it's, it's about hockey, football, skating and basketball, along with swimming. And yoga, of course, swimming is compulsory for everyone. So this is the way uh, they, in the two years, they have to learn these four sports. And then followed by, they have, they have an, uh, racket games can come little later to them. So that is the way uh, we are looking to, you know, develop them, uh, you know, a lot of co uh, coordinative abilities in the early stage. And that also makes them mentally very sharp. Powers, yes. I would like to add over here this curriculum that, uh, or the day schedule, that yeah. we have shared with you has a lot of science behind it. Yeah. It is not randomly that we have placed okay games yeah. and drama and drama, you have the dance and you have the academics or swimming. There is a lot of science behind it. Actually, it is whole brain learning. Yeah. At times, your left brain is working. At another time, the right brain is learning. And yeah. the scientists say that when both the brains combine together, yeah. Yeah. then the entire development, the holistic development of the child comes into the picture. So yeah. this whole curriculum and this whole schedule of the day is designed keeping this in mind that the child has to have a whole brain learning. Yeah. I, so parents, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, some of you have, might have just joined. Very warm welcome to all of you. There's a, there's a question that's been put up. What is the process of admission? I think the process of admission is well laid out on the Unison website. Uh, we will uh, obviously, you know, or post that we link can, across. We can also. have a look at the chat box and the admission officer. Correct, will correct, correct, correct. We'll, and uh, uh, we'll then uh, Arundhati talks about the whole brain learning and we talked about the entire day school. Correct, correct. You should not miss out on the fact that there is a lot of hand holding, yeah. nurturing, and a lot of, you know, pastoral care where the child is taken care of. So yeah. it doesn't show in the curriculum at all the times. Yeah. But it happens all the times. Yeah. At every so, point of time, there is someone who is taking care of the child. The emotional well-being of the child is taken into consideration. And that's a huge part of our curriculum. Yeah. And Varsha, so let me just come back to you on this one. See, uh, one of the concerns that a parent is putting a child into a boarding school is, you know, the time settling and all the stories that they might have heard, of, you know, initially about, so how do you actually make sure that, that those transients die, die down pretty quickly? What is the process of induction of a child of a new admission into the, into, and, 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 and what kind of support, both emotional and otherwise, do you think uh, a child gets? Yes, it's funny. Um, because in a residential school, we are all committed to their safety and security. Yeah. So when the children come in, of course, they must have heard a lot of things. But um, we ensure that they become very comfortable in the environment they are in yeah. and at every level. 
So it's like in class, they are, they are secured by their peers also. They get the same age group. Then there are teachers, very congenial environment also maintained in class. Like we've already talked about, you know, inquiry-based learning. So we give that, that helps children also bond with each other. Yeah. So it, it doesn't last very long, this initial um, hiccups that they have or the doubts that they have, and how will I settle in a boarding school? Yeah. It, it doesn't last very long because then they begin to bond with each other. They begin to bond with their teachers. Yeah. Uh, besides peers, they become their siblings. Like Dr. Khanda said, it's, it's like a community. Yeah. So the teachers make them comfortable. And not just that, like at various levels, like we were just talking about the pastoral care. So the pastoral care also takes um, notice of every emotion, their complete well-being is our commitment. Yeah. I would say that. So they, they have their matrons, they have their chalet in charges. If you are not uh, familiar, like we have chalets for children of age group, you know, placed in chalets according to their needs, to their requirement. So they are taken care of by the chalet in charges. So every, every emotional need, every, everything that they require, any help that they require. So initially, of course, when they come in, they are hurt. I would say it is more about being, you know, listening to people. But once you enter, you feel that it's just like a home away from home where everyone is ready to lend a hand. And not just that, we also have a professional counselor. So she is also anytime, 24 seven available for their counseling. Yeah, and I think that's very important because you get these kids at the age where they're, you know, that. Faculty, they're, they're experiencing new things, etc., in life, and right. you know, that's very, very important. Very, very important that they have that support available at hand. We've been that's talking about, we've been mentioning this word pastoral again and again. Yeah. I think for the ease of the parents, and because we have the dean of pastoral here, yeah. I would like her to throw some more light on what pastoral care is, because yeah. it's a totally new term when it comes to. Parents who are having their children in day schools, and it is one of the most important. Things. And it is of the most one of the most important vertical for us academics, pastoral, and co-curricular yeah, Absolutely, they are at equal levels. Yes. Parundati, please, uh, powers may I take the liberty of? Sure, sure. See, actually, the word pastoral came from pasture. So when the shepherds they used to herd their cattle. That was the uh, origin from where the word pastoral has come. So the way the shepherd is actually getting collected with the herds and the cattle in much in the same way, we work all around the clock, 24 by 7. We are available to the child as if we were the parents. So there is a term called in loco parentis. We are not the parents, but yet we are acting like parents and we are around the child. So when the child is in the academic block, the class teachers are there, the subject teachers are there. When the child is in the sports field, of course the sports teachers are there, but a lot of time is spent in the hostel, in the residential area where the parents are not there. So who is taking care of the child when the child goes back to the hostel is the chalet in charges, I'm also available, the matrons are available, the vice principal, the principal, we all collectively form the pastoral team. And the main underpin word is in loco parentis, the yardstick that we measure is that are we acting in the same way as the parent would have acted? The child will have her highs and lows. The child is exploring, the child is experimenting, so there will be times when she will be successful. There will be times when she will not be that successful. So at those times, are we able to reach out to the child? Are we able to give the emotional support? So this is what is a pastoral care, if I put it in very simple words. Sure. But this is how they write it in words. I would take liberty to go a little ahead. In my uh, opinion, Every parent wants the child to be future ready. Now, yeah. what is this future readiness? This is always talked about on the internet. There are four words, communication, creation, collaboration, and the last word that has got added is compassion. Yeah. 
So if we are able to give these four parameters to our child, she is future ready. No matter which curriculum she has studied, whether it is science or humanities or commerce, if she is able to imbibe good communication skills, create creativity or out of the box thinking, collaboration and compassion, then she will be a good global leader and parents and we will be proud of them in future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Pavel, you know, yeah. yesterday, yesterday I was watching a video now since uh, Dr. Sh uh, Shukla has mentioned about um, compassion. Yesterday I heard Dr. Hegde speak yeah. about uh, healthy children. So, you know, if you, if you look at WHO or uh, any any other uh, scientific definition of health, it says absence of disease. But actually, in these days, everybody is prone to diseases. The thing is, health, healthy means, uh, there are two, two keywords to this. One is uh, people who want to be compassionate. Uh, you know, we need to train them to be compassionate. That is very, very important. And the second keyword is enthusiasm. We have to train children to become enthusiastic workers. Yes. So I think um, in a boarding school, I could relate it to a boarding school because we are, you know, if children are put at a young age in a boarding school, we can mold them to become enthusiastic towards their work and compassionate human beings, which is the requirement of the time. Right, absolutely. And I think you're, you're so right on that. I think we, the, the, the feeling of empathy and compassion you know, would make us better citizens. Dr. Kanna, back to you. Uh, you know, the future ready part of it, you know, uh, the placements, you know, the, the universities and how do we prepare and how do we actually uh, mold our children? How do we counsel our children? What are the facilities available? What has been our record so far? I think that's that's one of the key questions that parents have. Definitely. Thank you. Um, see, Pavas, it takes uh, the most important thing is to make the children realize the link between the passion and the profession. And we at UNICEF, because the children are with us 24-7, we yeah. get to know their interests thoroughly. We can, yeah. take, we, you know, we monitor them and we get to know their aptitude and the attitude of our kids. Yeah. And we then provide them with the required information, clarity of thought, and help them to plan. And we started as early as grade 8. So my first thing is the choice of curriculum which we talked about. Then comes the subject choices because sometimes we have to work backwards. We have to see what children are looking at if they are wanting to do a particular course or a particular university. So then we help them with, we have a lot of counseling sessions and we begin with the parents and the students in the first go. It is a, you know, a session for the entire class and then for the section and then we narrow it down to the child and the parent. And then separately with the child and the parent. And we help them with profile building. We support them with internships. So basically CV building, which requires internships, yeah. community service, summer school applications. And something which is very important for universities nowadays is the LORs, which is the letter of recommendation. And letter of recommendation is not about writing the child is hardworking and the child is dedicated and approachable. Yeah. It has to be a story about the child. Yeah. It is an individual story and the teacher is able to write it best when the teacher has known the child, has seen the child in and out, which yeah. helps best in our school because we see the child with them. And uh, if you look at our website, and otherwise also I can share it right here. The day before yesterday only, we've got one admission at the Imperial College. And we have, you know, and it is varied interest. It could be designing, it could be engineering, it could be medical, it could be, you know, liberal arts. So our website boasts of many such colleges where there's University of Waterloo, Imperial, Ashoka, Delhi University, Parsons, Pratt University. So many. Again, the list is endless. One. But, you know, some parents had one question. Yes. What about the Indian exam? We, we cater, how do you prepare for these examinations, whether yeah. it's Indian or whether it, it is abroad? This is what we have given, but at the same time, all these universities require a, you know, entrance need to write the entrance examinations. Also. Yes. So we provide competitive classes coaching under one group. We have a tie up with, we have, we have tie up with the 
best of the institutes from outside and the resource persons come from outside for abroad, whether it is ACT, whether it is SAT, TOEFL, IELTS, we provide coaching for that. And when it comes to Indian competitive examinations, be it CLAT, be it uh, IPM, BBA, law, all of these need J. We are providing coaching from the resource persons, those who are the reputed ones, those who have, if their forte is this. So the parent doesn't have to bother about you know, escorting the child. So they are getting best of both the worlds. They are studying in a boarding school in a safe, congenial environment with their friends, and they are also getting to you know, uh, learn from the best of the faculty and prepare for the competitive examinations, be it Indian or Indian. Yeah, I, I guess I guess that's so important because once you sort of in grade eight, eighth, and ninth, and tenth, it's about time that you have to start thinking about what's going to happen once you leave the school. And 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 from what I've heard you say is that Unison is is all equipped to handle any such aspirations that a child might. So that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, next topic is uh, you know, uh, uh, Reshu. I don't know whether you or Miss Shukla would you like to tackle what the the, the safety security right. That's a, that's a, that's a, you know, question that comes up um, yes. quite often. People, and, and let me put that into context that, you know, uh, nobody is saying that uh, A is more secure than B, etc. We're not comparing here, but uh, off late, you know, off late, there have been several incidences in schools in general. And I'm not saying in boarding schools, but schools in general where, you know, safety become a prime uh, uh, issue, more so in boarding schools because the child is at least away from home. Day schools, they still come back home in the evening. So, so you know, uh, it's, it's one of the prime concerns for the parents. How is UNICEF put to address that? I would agree with you, Powers. It is a very, very important uh, and critical question that comes across the parents' mind when they want to put their child in a school. Now, Security and safety, if you would ask me, I will put it under two headings. One is the physical security and safety, and the other one is emotional. So first I'll talk about the physical security and safety. For that, uh, if the child is with us, we are not only bound to take care of her in uh, emotional growth, mental growth, or physical growth, but we are also ready to take her for any medical emergency. We have a tie-up with Max Hospital. We have a tie-up with police and fire stations. Max is right across the road, if I don't... If yes, I don't yes. Know. Less than two kilometers. Yes. So uh, we have the Max Hospital, police and fire stations right on our fingertips. The minute there is any emergency, we can reach out to them. Yeah. We have the state-of-art firefighting equipment and very trained people security team is there. And they have... Uh, regular drills on this so that at any point of time, if the firefighting is required, they, these instruments can be used. We have physical and CCTV based vigilance in place and we can monitor the movement of the outside people or even our children. We have very strict in, uh, entry uh, procedures. So anybody and uh, anybody or any outsider cannot enter our campus. We have only one gate and the entry policy is very, very strict. Thereafter, we have very trained and professional security guards. These security guards, they have their regular drills and they are placed at very uh, critical locations of the school and they are at all times patrolling. And what is the unique feature of Unison World School is that we have trained lady guards. I have never heard of trained lady guards in a boarding school. So we can take pride in saying this, that these lady guards, they are ready to handle any emergency situations. In-house infirmary is also there. So for cold, cough, or minor problems, the child doesn't have to rush to Max Hospital as such. We can take care of her, these small minor problems. In the infirmary, we have a resident medical officer and we have the nursing staff with us. We uh, also uh, uh, like add on here, the, res, uh, the infirmary, infirmary, uh, in-house infirmary, which Ms. Shukla is talking about, that is also a tie-up with Maxu. Oh. Yes, 
So the staff is from Max Hospital. One, I think that's it's not about only rushing across the road. It's, an extension. it's an extension ah. of it. Yes, extension of Max Hospital. So in case they want to refer the child for an X-ray or for an ultrasound or any other specialist checkup, then they are going to the Max Hospital. We have segregated residential and administrative areas so that the uh, outsiders are not interacting with the children in any way. The second part of the safety and security, if you allow me to talk about, is the emotional security. And that is... Because the children who are coming to us, they are coming to us at the age of 9 and, 10, 9 and 10, at the most 11 or 12. And more than often, the parents tell us that they're very sensitive. I wanted to deliberate on this word sensitive. Yes, they are sensitive. And they are sensitive towards themselves. If they are sensitive towards themselves, naturally, they will be very emotional. But at UWS, what we try to do is... We want to turn this sensitivity towards themselves into sensitivity towards others. What you were talking about, empathy. Yeah. So the sensitivity of the child now becomes empathy and it turns into sensibility. So we actually want to turn each and every child into a sensible citizen. Sure. Sensitive and sensible both. Yeah. That is what we are doing. Okay. Uh, so there's, uh, again, the questions keep coming. Parents keep asking questions. I think it's open now. I think yes. you can keep asking questions. There's a question about the fee right now. See, again, fee and procedure, they're all there on the website, and we will publish it. I think we'll, we'll sort of uh, leave this discussion to uh, more media thought. Uh, the big question right now, uh, Dr. Kanna, COVID. Are you ready for it? Do you have girls at the campus? And how difficult or easy it is? So with a lot of pride, I can say that we are absolutely ready for it. It was a daunting task. It was. It, uh, we have really worked very hard towards it. And we have had sessions and meetings and all. And um, this itself reflects that I when I'm able to say that we have the entire school from grade 6 to 12 with us. Barring few children who have some illness issues at home or some COVID cases at home or emergencies at home due to which they have not been able to attend. Rest the entire school with us, is with us. We haven't called grade five because the government guidelines do not allow us to do that. So I would like to elaborate here. A, we are adhering to all the government guidelines. B, we are in a state of preparedness. One, when it comes to especially medical emergency. So we are taking care of all the social distancing norms. We are ensuring that the temperature, the vitals, the parameters are taken care of. Everybody is wearing the masks. They are, have very stringent entry exit protocols. All the vehicles, if at all, any vehicle has to come in, has to be screened. It has to be sanitization measures have been taken care of. The school is sanitized in such a manner that children their seat, their you know when they go go back to the hostel during that time the academic area is sanitized and when they are in the academic area the hostel area is sanitized. For that matter, we have our housekeeping staff in house. We have they are also residing with us on campus right now, so that th there is limited entry and exit. You know, movement is limited outside the. Yeah. And worst come worst, see COVID is beyond control of each of any of us. So for that, again, we have a tie up with Max. We have had the officers visiting us. The nodal officer has visited us, has looked at the facility. We have demarcated an area. We have isolation facilities with us. Yeah. And um, I, you would like to know that each of our students who has reported, we call them in a staggered manner. Yeah. Every student was uh, came back with a RT-PCR negative report. And then they were quarantined. Their meals were served. Every student was given an allotted space. After a week of quarantine, they were tested once again. And then they were brought out. And that is the manner where the entire school is a green bubble right now. Be it teachers, students, or anybody. So I think we are in a position to handle because if you come to school, the entire campus is there. 
lot of work, lot of work. Yes, it is, and it is a continuous process. Yes, yeah. And I just, yes, yes. I just wanted to add that yes. it's like uh, besides all the facilities and everything else that we are ensuring, we also train these young minds to take care of themselves when they're alone by themselves. That is very essential because your safety is in your hands and that has to be instilled in their minds so that they take care of themselves. Of course, we have sanitizers installed everywhere. So use them. So we, we teach them that. So we, yes, we are prepared. Masks essential. So. Great. I think. Uh, and not only that, I would like to add one point. All our housekeeping, our guards, for that matter, our drivers, yeah. they have all been trained by Max Hospital doctors Wonderful. as to how to cope up with if a child has to be shifted yeah. or how to look at the entire protocols. Right. And I think, uh, Tashwin, you had a question if uh, in COVID 19 school will open up or not. I think that has been answered. I think the school is open actually. Yes, yes, yes. Open we are open. already. Right. And More Priya, than five percent. You have your hand up. Uh, if you could type in your question, uh, that will be great. Priya Agrawal has her hand up. If you can just type in your question in the Q and A box, we'll be able to address that. Now, I think the COVID does have some silver lining. One, of course, the vaccination started. Mercifully, this infection has been a little, you know, less. I think has spared children. I think I think that's that's one one bit of it, and you know, come to look at it, I think that as far as isolation is concerned, boarding schools are better isolated than anybody else. You know, to, to look at it. So I think I think I think that way. I think uh, you know, it's it makes sense. Uh, okay, now some general questions that are coming in. Uh, you know, typical uh, year that looks like. When do you when do you have leaves and when do you when and how do children come back and do you have support offered to children when they come back in? Uh, or you know, do parents have to come pick up things in general? About we, you know, we provide the airport drop and airport pickup from okay. Derado uh, Airport, and I think all the places they are uh, very nicely connected with the Derado Airport. Yes, so, really well connected now. I think you direct flight to almost all 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 cities now. And yes. at no point are they going alone. There is a bunch of girls heading towards that area. So even if they okay. have to change a flight in Delhi. There are a lot of okay. girls who are there. Okay, and uh, 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 so Priya Agarwal has put in a question. I'd like to ask, what about the day outings and also night outings? Uh, how's the precaution will be taken in this situation? So, so they, 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 the children are stepping out. A, are they stepping out if at all? If, if they're not oh, stepping out, I yeah. not right now. Yeah, I no, guess. I have no night outing, no day outing. But otherwise, we do plan uh, a double night out, maybe in a span of one month. Yeah. Okay. So every month, every three weeks in a normal course, we have a day outing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, in one term, which is a four month term normally, working term, I would say, we have two double night outs. And after every four months, we break for two months or a month and a half, two months in summers and for about six weeks in winters. प्रियंका Procedure mein jo testing ho rahi hai, wo to rahi hai because they are also concentrated in testing. But if they uh, unko isolate kar liya hai, uh, uh, ko, uh, girls ko, to ab wo, wo isolated hi to unka jitna minimize kar sakenge contact, utna minimize kar isolation, isolation feels a little you know scary. So isolation to nahi, but uh, we are in a green bubble. We all are together. Basically, we all are in a green bubble. Yeah. Summer breaks from the 15th of May for two months. So that's a long break, I think. And I'm sure the situation will improve by then. Yes. The school is reopening. Sorry. The typical calendar year is a Eventful. 
इसके बीच में एक नाइट आउट जरूर मिलती है बट इस साल नहीं मिलती है फिफ्टीन मई से फिफ्टीन जुलाई तक हमारी क्लासेस होती है बच्चे सॉरी छुट्टियां होती है फिफ्टीन जुलाई को बच्चे वापस आते हैं उसके एक हफ्ते बाद उनके फर्स्ट यूनिट टेस्ट होते हैं उसके बाद सितंबर तक उन लोगों के हाफ ईयर लीज होती है इसके बाद हमारा एनुअल डे होता है जिसमें अगेन पेरेंट्स दो दिन के लिए बच्चों से मिलते हैं उसके बाद एक यूनिट टेस्ट और होकर फर्स्ट दिसंबर से हमारी छुट्टियाँ हो जाती है फिर फिफ्टीन जनवरी तक स्कूल खुलता है डेढ़ महीने की छुट्टी तब होती है और फिर 15 जनवरी से मार्च में फिर से फाइनल एग्जाम्स होते हैं और फिर अप्रैल में बीच बीच में रोज छुट्टी नहीं मिलती है आउटिंग होती है प्रेफर करते हैं कि रोज रोज आप लोग आके मिल सकते हैं नाइट आउट होती है हर दो महीने के बाद आज फ्राइडे को ले गए संडे शाम को बच्चे को वापस ले बीच बीच में छुट्टी नहीं मिलती I think uh, well, let me see if there's any more. Also, eh, when the, when the children are in quarantine, जब वो quarantine में रहते हैं तब वो video call कर सकते हैं. हाँ. हाँ. ये अगला सवाल था कि how how often can they talk to parents? Every day. Every day. Every day. Sixty minutes होते हैं हर बच्चे के पास. No, no, no. Ninety minutes. Ninety minutes. अभी हमने ninety किया है. Sixty से ninety कर दिया. Ninety minutes because outing का ज़्यादा रहता है कि outing cancel है. मिनट्स एक मंथ में होते हैं हम बच्चों को राशन करना भी सिखाते हैं मतलब प्लानिंग करने भी सिखाते हैं तीन रजिस्टर्ड नंबर होते हैं जो पेरेंट्स हमें देते हैं उन तीन नंबर्स पर बच्चे ऐसे हम किसी को अलाउ नहीं करते किसी भी नंबर पे बात करने हर बच्चे के पास एक कोड होता है उस कोड को डायल करके वो तीन नंबर में से कोई नंबर वो डायल कर सकते हैं नाइन्टी मिनट्स एक मंथ में होते हैं वो बात कर सकते हैं आजकल हम बीच बीच में वीडियो कॉल भी करा रहे हैं और जब क्वारंटीन में होते हैं तो थोड़ी ज्यादा वीडियो कॉल कराते हैं उस पर्टिकुलर वीक Okay. Uh, एक बोर्डिंग फैसिलिटीज पे बताइए बोर्डिंग फैसिलिटीज कैन एलैबोरेट व्हाट यू नो हाउ हाउ इज हाउ इज द बोर्डिंग स्ट्रक्चर कितने कितनी कितनी लड़कियां हैं एक रूम में किस ग्रेड में कैसा है वो होता क्या है कि हमारे पास डू यू वांट मी टू आंसर इन इंग्लिश और हिंदी जी आप हिंदी में अगर ठीक है आप आंसर करें तो ठीक है तो हमारे पास बच्चा क्लास फाइव में आता है तो फाइव सिक्स सेवन और एट ये वाली क्लासेस हम डॉमेट्री में रखते हैं दो शैले हैं हमारे पास मेपल और वॉलनट और इसमें एट बेडेड और सेवन बेडेड डॉमेट्री है यानी जो बच्चे आएंगे ये जूनियर क्लासेस में ये डॉमेट्री में रहेंगे जहाँ पे सात बच्चे होंगे या आठ क्योंकि ये बहुत छोटे बच्चे होते हैं तो इनको आपस में मिलना बहुत जरूरी होता है और हर सात या आठ बच्चे के पास दो वॉशरूम्स और दो टॉयलेट्स होते हैं तो इनको काफ़ी अच्छा साफ सुथरा एनवायरनमेंट मिलता है और टाइम भी मिल जाता है अपने आप को साफ सुथरा रखने के लिए और इनके हर फ्लोर के ऊपर जहाँ 22 बच्चों की तीन डॉमेट्री होगी तो उनके पास एक कॉमन रूम होता है और हर कॉमन रूम में एक टी होगा कुछ इनके पास बोर्ड गेम्स होते हैं जैसे चेस है या लूडो है आपके पास ब्लैक ये कैरम बोर्ड है इस तरह के ये भी होते हैं म्यूजिक सिस्टम है टीवी है तो बच्चे आपस में बैठ के बातें भी कर सकते हैं और खेल भी सकते हैं इसके अलावा हमारे यहाँ शैले जो बच्चा बड़ा होता है नाइन्थ क्लास से ट्वेल्थ क्लास तो वो दूसरे शैलेज में जाता है जिनका नाम है रोजवुड और ओकवुड वहाँ पे हमारे पास रूम फेसिलिटी है जिसमें हर रूम के अंदर चार बच्चे रुकते हैं क्योंकि तो अब बच्चा बड़ा हो रहा है उसको अपनी पर्सनल स्पेस भी चाहिए होती है और हर बच्चे के पास एक अपनी कबर्ड है एक अपना लॉकर है स्टडी टेबल है तो और उसका जो बेड है वो भी बंक बेड है तो उसके अंदर वो काफी सामान रख सकता है तो इस वजह से उनके पास अपना समय और स्पेस दोनों मिल जाती है जिससे कि वो अपनी पढ़ाई कर सके हर फ्लोर पे इनके पास अगेन एक कॉमन रूम होता है जैसा कि जूनियर स्कूल में भी था और ये इनके पास हमारे पास वो पेंट्री तो नहीं है लेकिन केटल वगैरह सब कुछ है 
उसके शैले के अंदर फ्लोर में तो अगर किसी बच्चे को गर्म पानी चाहिए तो वो भी हम दे सकते हैं पीने के लिए और कोई भी ऐसी जरूरत है तो हमारी इन्फर्मरी भी पास है और हमारा मेस भी बहुत पास में है तो किसी भी सिचुएशन में हम बच्चे को कोई भी फैसिलिटी प्रोवाइड कर सकते हैं इन्फर्मरी हमारी सबसे सीनियर मोस्ट शैले के नीचे ही है तो बहुत दूर बिल्कुल नहीं है बिल्कुल बगल में ही है बच्चे वहाँ पे आराम से जा सकते हैं सारी दवाइयाँ जो है वो हम इन्फर्मरी से ही एडमिनिस्टर करते हैं कोई भी बच्चा अपनी पर्सनल दवाई अपने पास नहीं रख सकता है वो आप समझ ही सकते हैं कि हम क्यों दवा बच्चे के पास के लिए चाहे वो होम्योपैथी हो या एलोपैथी आज आपके बच्चे के पास चार टैबलेट्स रखी है पर दूसरे बच्चे ने वो उठा के खा ली तो कोई भी प्रॉब्लम हो सकती है इसलिए दवाइयाँ सारी इन्फर्मरी से ही बच्चे को मिलती है एक अगर हम लोअर हायरार्की से चले तो एक सहायिका दीदी मतलब एक दीदी एक मेट्रन जो बच्चों की हर जरूरत का ख्याल रखती है एक ए सी आई मतलब एडिशनल असिस्टेंट शैले इंचार्ज और एक सी आई विच इज द शैले इंचार्ज मतलब एक हाउस मदर टाइप हो गई एक उनके असिस्टेंट हो गई जो हमारे एकेडमिक टीचर्स हैं एक मेट्रन और एक सहायिका इतने लोग हर फ्लोर पर होते हैं बच्चों की हर जरूरत का ध्यान रखने के लिए और प्लस बड़ा अम्ब्रेला इज द पैस्टोरल अम्ब्रेला उसमें हम सब लोग तो है ही इट गोज विदाउट से सब लोग सब टीचर्स आर देयर एज पैस्टोरल टीचर्स सो आई थिंक I guess that's it. I think we've not had any more questions right now. I think whatever was there, we'll try and address them. You know about the fees and etc. Can can be addressed there. Uh, if there are there are any, now is the time. Uh, parents, uh, thank you so much, um, panelists. Thank you so much, parents, for 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 coming coming here. I would like to thank all of you, uh, panelists. It was a wonderful discussion. I I've been to the school. I know it is one of the finest schools. I've seen the school. Uh, facilities wise curriculum wise the staff wise i think it is it ranks right up there among uh, among the best ones in the country uh, parents if you have any more questions look up the website come to edustock we'll, we'll talk about it ring uh, unison up uh, i think these are uh, challenging times for education in general but i can tell you if there is one set of schools that are prepared to sort of meet the challenge head on is i think is one of the better boarding schools like unison that thank you everybody thank, thank you so much for thank you, much for, you. For, for, uh, for 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 sparing this time panelists thank you so much parents for attending thank you very much i, I, I thank hope you. It, was, thank it, you. it was it was useful uh well have a great evening all thank you okay bye 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 thank you everyone.